What's up, guys? I hope everybody is doing good. We got a lot of information to cover today. I'm super excited as it's our first full, full version YouTube video, and we're going to be covering a lot of information, guys. So I'm going to break this down into three episodes, essentially taking your rough idea all the way through composition to mixing and mastering and different ways of performing that on, on different systems. So don't worry. I'm using Studio One which is amazing. I love Studio One, but if you're using any other DAW, this all applies, guys. So today, episode one, what are we going to cover? We're going to cover kit selection and the beat or groove that you decide to start flipping on. Number two, we're going to cover the melody and the main foundation of the idea, which in my mind is very heavily oriented around melody. And the third would be chord and supporting elements. So we're going to stick to that today. So again, kit selection, beat, we're going to do melody and the primary idea, and we're going to do chords and supporting elements. So without further ado, let's jump right into it because it's a lot to cover. So for me today, I want to start with kit selection. So what I've decided to do is download the new kit package from ADSR. I'm not sure if you guys have seen the marketing. They had quite a, um, it's been everywhere. You know, I've seen it for a couple months now and decided, hey, I need some new one shots for my drum kit. So we're going to start there, kit selection. And how do you do that? So for me, I'm using Studio One. I know where my files are. So, you know, whichever DAW you're using, make sure you always organize your files, guys, because it's, it's super important. So without wasting time, I'm going to open up Impact XT. So if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's essentially a sample editor that will control, for my, for my instance, would be um, the Atom, the Atom controller pad. I'll put a picture somewhere there for you guys to see. This works with any DAW. So if you're using you know, Ableton Live, you're going to have a drum rack, essentially the same thing. So go through, organize your files, put them wherever you'd like, and then you open it up. So I will open up a fresh, a fresh sample page here. Go through them, listen to them, because it's really important. I'm using one shots, as I'm not going to be using loops for this example. Monitor different kicks. Because the last thing you want is to have 20 different kicks and you're trying to perform this. No, you don't need that many. So find the kicks that you like. It's a little bit boxy. That's quite nice. You can hear that they have the under, under the snare mic capturing a little bit of... See, that's nice. So what, so what you do, you start taking this and drag it into your sample editor. So as I play here, my atom, I'm going to get that sample. I quite like that because I like the, the live sound of it and it's going to be underneath it, right? And together, there you go, you got a kick. So you continue doing that. Go through your hi-hats. You guys, don't, don't rush through this. It's very important. Keep in mind what kind of genre you want to make kind of beat you want to make. Yeah. So I like to keep my hi-hats up here. That's a personal thing. I will go through my snares again. Take your time. It's kind of nice. It's like a rim shot, right? So I'll keep that secondary. Oh, that's got some smack to it. Just in case, I already can hear what I can do with that. But again, this is personal preference. Um, I do like to have some toms, as I am an 80s kid. So I like to have some toms. Okay, let's just say we like those three toms. Start bringing them in. So then you can at least have something. Right? 
you get the point. So to save some time, I've already set up mine that I like. So I've got here, I've got some kicks. I like to keep my snares in one corner. Guys, this is completely up to you. If you don't see that in the other camera, you can check here. I like that because I can do snare rolls. Right? I have my toms up top. These are all hi-hats. I think I have some claps here just to add some movement. Yeah, essentially that. And I'm going to start with a very simple beat. Something like that. And then we're going to get, we're going to dive a little deeper how to make that really move. So let's start. Wish me luck. We're going to put a metronome on. And if you guys are using any kind of like intelligent quantization that's coming in the input, uh, feel free to, but make sure that you're on eighth notes or 16th notes, depending on how you want to perform your hi-hats. For this example, eighth notes is fine. Um, I may be a little bit sloppy, so I want to make sure that it quantizes right away and then I'll augment it later. So for me, I'm going to start like that. Oh, before I get into that, we're talking about three topics today, just a little refresh. So kit selection, melody, and chords. You can do this in any order. There's no rules. Like sometimes I, I feel some chords that will then lead me to a melody, which leads me to the beat. So depends on your working style and what you're doing that day. So if you want to start with your kit and the beat, do so. And if you want to start with your melody, that's also fine. Um, I have a little melody that is already in my head, so I'm going to start with the kit today and the, the beat in general. So here we go. Okay, so I had that in my first take, surely. So let's go back to the first take. Let's take a listen, take the metronome off. If things move, you guys, it's real life. Uh, that's what we're here for. We're going to edit it, right? Ah, uh, fine. So now talking about a beat and a groove, I feel that this groove uh, can be a little bit dated, surely, because the hi-hats don't have a lot of movement. So how do you do that without being a professional finger drummer? Well, there's many ways to do that in any DAW. So for this example, I'm going to do this old school. So no matter which DAW you're using, uh, use that. You can simply take one of these guys, hit duplicate, right? And start moving them on every on every note, right? Sorry, I should say, yeah, there you go. So you'll start to see how that will work, right? A little bit too fast. So then you can start to figure it out. This is all, you know, customizable for however you want your beats to be. But just as an example, if I wanted something like that, duplicate them out, right? Let's bring another one. So there you go. We'll start to have them on every quarter note. Right? You can see some movement coming. And what's nice about this is if you put this on 64, 32, you'll start seeing different changes in your grid. If you want to go old school with it and draw it in, which is fine. Completely fine. I encourage that. Play around with timing. Uh, triplets definitely have a big aspect into trap music and such. So now going back to that, I got to make sure my mic's not going to turn off. I'll bring in the actual beat that I've already edited here just to save us some time. You know what? I made a two, two bar beat earlier, so let's stay with that. So this is what I ended up staying with, with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of love. I believe I added an extra kick at the end here. Right? I mean, that makes, that makes movement already. So we've got our beat, which is nice. Now, I do want to talk about a few different DAWs, like FL Studio, for example. They're using things in more of a pattern mode, which is, in all honesty, quite old school, and I love it. Right, And if you're a Studio One user and you're watching FL Studio users and you're like, wow, why can they do that? You can too. And I'll show you how 
you can just make a right click here, come down to instrument parts, and right there, you've got convert part to pattern. So what does that do? That'll take what I've just performed, and it will add it into a pattern rather than simple middle MIDI notes. So there you go. Now you're going to see this, which you can start to just draw in, right? You guys know how this works. Say I want another hi-hat here. Right? You can start making movements here all you want, which is great. So that's another way to edit your, your pattern. For this example, I'm not going to do that, so I've undone it. undo undo for this track i already chose a key so i'm gonna put up a chart here if you guys haven't seen it before uh, it's essentially discussing in a chart form which is which is amazing for me it's like a bible uh you know but i'm a little bit old school so i can see that and i can see the roman numerals of which chords belong in each key and i also knew that i wanted to do this song here in in d minor and I'm going to show you guys another way. If you're not so versed in music theory, don't let it bother you because, uh, in all honesty, it's 2020 now and we got a lot of tools that we can get around uh, the music theory quite, quite easily. So for myself, you'll see I had this melody while I was creating the beat. So for myself, I use kind of the kit selection and beat and the melody about this at the same time so like i said those are all interchangeable you can use them in any order you want uh, for myself i was using something like this right so that's about you know pretty simple melody in the key of d minor so before i jump into showing you um what i've done with that I'll bring it, open up Serum. Well, actually, you know what, let's not jump. So inside Studio One, you can see here that I've already performed my MIDI notes, right? But I've also locked it into a scale. So if, I know for you guys with FL Studio, this is second nature for you guys because this has always been implemented in uh, the way FL Studio works and surely Ableton and Pro Tools have other versions. Normally you have to create those MIDI notes and we would turn them into ghost notes. So essentially, like if you can see this keyboard here, I've locked myself into D natural minor scale. So all these notes that are highlighted belong in the D natural minor scale. So if I tried to move this note now, which uh, sorry, just let me show what I've done. I've brought it into Serum. If you guys don't have Serum, uh, definitely look into investing in it because it's it's key. You know, it's one of the, one of those VST plugins that you know they're definitely worth your time uh, to take a look at. So anyway, if I were to move this, it would only allow me to move it in the scale, right? You see how it's skipping those notes? It won't allow me to go any other note. Now, I've performed this before, I've locked that. That's my taste. Say I wanted to perform it, but if you guys aren't sure about music theory, don't, don't, don't be discouraged. Every program has a way to lock that in. I will go more in depth about it, surely in another tutorial as I don't want to um, make this tutorial too long as we are covering a lot of depth. So saying that, so I've locked into D minor, natural minor. And I've also performed on the keyboard, again, this simple melody. Right? So I've recorded that, I've brought it up into another channel which is Serum. I'm going to mute these for now, simply because I want you to hear the drum pattern that I've done in step one, and then we're going to start introducing the melody. 
with some movement. So let me just open up Serum so you can see what's going on in there too. So this is adding a lot. It's a wavetable synth, so it's creating some movement rather than just being a static note, which, you know, you can already start hearing this lo-fi vibe, which is what I'm going for. And I'd like to point out now that I am using some serum presets that came with the new ADSR um, lo-fi. Lo-fi or two, I believe it's called. I don't know why I keep calling it lo-fi. But it's definitely worthwhile, guys. Like, I bought it simply for the drum kits, uh, the, the, the one shots, and I also bought it for some presets because I think that sometimes if you're making music every day, you want just to switch it up. So there's nothing wrong with that. So that's how I've started. You know, it starts to move now. I can already hear if I start adding an 808. Um, that is not actually set out for our lesson today, but I'm definitely putting in the bass. So we, we will work on that, and I'm going to put that in as the chords and supporting elements, which is going to come right next, as it's very important. I feel that right now with my kit selection, I feel that my kick is already triggering this 808-type vibe. So I'm not so stressed about it right now. And I also may want to add some counter melody or some counter rhythms that's going to add more movements. We'll get more into that. But for now, I think that this is a, a great starting point. Uh, you know, just simply, you know, simple drum beat. You can punch it in in eighth notes or whatever you feel comfortable with. You can draw it in. Augment the high the hi hats a little bit. If you want more trap, Start working with triplets. You know, you can easily see them on the grid. So you might want to just up your grid ante a little bit. See if I zoom in. I have a lot of grids available to me. So you can start putting them in. You know, zoom in on your project. You can do that. That's quite old school. Studio One has other features if you're a um, Studio One user. Like I said, there's a lot a lot of things you can do in the pattern pattern editing mode, which you can tell one, one MIDI sample that I want a triplet there. Now, if you don't have that, availab that available to you, you can easily record the triplet and going back to step one, save that file somewhere and then bring it into your pad. So as you're playing like single note hi-hats, you can quickly smash another pad and it will add that triplet, you know, and then you can really start in live performance, which I think is, you know, awesome. And it's like, like, again, it's, you hear this every day on the radio, people are doing this. So I suppose for the melody, that's, that's about it for the core melody, because I feel it's very simple. And if you are performing on the keys, we're using mostly white notes. I'm going to put up that chart again, and uh, I'm going to put up the minor chart today as we're talking about a minor key. In the future, we'll talk. We'll go more into depth about music theory. But like I said, don't don't get discouraged. There's many tools around. Uh, if if you're just learning today, don't look at that chart and be like, "Wow, it's, it's it's quite simple itself on its own." But we also have tools to get around it. I am going to use for this song and for this example in particular, I'm going to be using something called Cthulhu. Now, Cthulhu is amazing it's it's created by the same people who created serum which is one of the best wavetable since i've showed it in the in the previous example so a long story short what is cthulhu cthulhu is essentially triggering midi notes into another vst which you can decide and in order to do that like if you're looking here at my screen you've got to run cthulhu into another system. So normally you bring in whatever plugin you want and then you can change your inputs. Now, this deserves a tutorial on its own. It's not overly complicated, but you do need to set it up. Now, in this case, for this example, I've decided to go with, hold on, let me unmute this. I've decided to go with Cthulhu in the key of D minor, which the relative major is F major. You know, it, that takes a little bit of music theory, but Cthulhu is taking that out of the equation. 
So if you know you're in D minor, you start recording in D minor. The relative major is obviously F. And they will put together a series of positions, chord positions, you can pretty much say. So rather than using the basic triad, they might move the bass note around. They might, you know, you, you have to use your ear on this one because it's not um, locked into a specific chord pattern, which is great because it brings you back to ear training, right? So for me, if you unmute this, any of these chords will work in the key of D minor, right? They're beautiful voicings. So it, that was the word I was looking for. They're chord voicings, which can change everything. So what's really nice about Cthulhu is you can essentially, yeah, okay, I want to do this in D minor. Close that down, open up another plugin that you want to trigger. So you piggyback them off each other. Now you have to remember to mute Cthulhu as it's just going to be triggering, okay? Another pattern. And what's great about it is once you've already kind of got your MIDI notes in order that you've already triggered and you like them, so you record that in Cthulhu, open up Serum or XL, uh, XLN Audio, whatever you want, guys. You can use a piano, uh, you can use strings, whatever. And then you bring those on, trigger it, go back, hit record. It will literally input those chords for you, which is... Uh, unbelievable it's amazing so for me that's what i've done rather than playing the chords i wanted to use something that get me that gets me out of my habitual patterns that i use a lot and and all you musicians out there know what i'm talking about you know you know what works you know what works for you and you tend to use those a little bit too much so some this sometimes it's nice just to you know have a new take on those chords and those voicings but again, that needs a whole tutorial. So let me know in the comments if you guys need need a little bit of extra help getting that set up. I'd be happy to to help. So essentially, that's what I've done. I've triggered the mini notes. I'm sending them to another plugin, which is Serum. Again, I uh, can't tell you how, how much Serum has just uh, changed the game. And it's not a new thing. It's, you know, without further ado, let's check out what those chord voicings will sound like once triggered. Oh, looks like I have to go back to uh, so that menu that just came up is essentially telling me that I need to go and update the, the serum. They must have just came out with an update as I'm recording this. But again, this is live, guys. So that's what I've done. So if you look into the voicings and bring this on to um, a solo mode, I apologize for that. My mic is also set up through this program. So it cut out for a second. So if I bring in Cthulhu, you'll hear what it's doing. Right? Essentially created a, a bed that I can lay my melody and beats into, which will bring us into the next episode, which is going to get really intense, guys. We're going to be using... Yeah, we're going to be using a lot of theory for composition, counter melodies, ear candy, um, and then finally mixing and automation. If you guys want to package this up later, definitely stay tuned for episode two because it's going to get in depth. This is not a full beat, as I believe there should be a part B, and there should be some different drops. And, you know, we're going to get all into that in the next episode, but I will leave you with what we've created today. Let me make sure Cthulhu is muted. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a lot to cover, but definitely worth it. And we'll catch you in episode two.